Meredith Morakovitz, if you can unmute, you can certainly ask a couple questions of James Paxton. Do I look at the big screen? You're going to see her popping. Okay. Hi, James. Hope you're well. Hi, I hope you're well, too. Um, you were out there today throwing a simulated game. What did you take away from that? Uh, it felt good to get back on a dirt mound. You know, I've been throwing on a turf mound and running shoes for the last little while. Um, so getting back out in the dirt with the guys and facing some of our hitters, it was, it was great. Felt, uh, felt good, felt healthy. Uh, it was a good first step for me. Last I spoke to you, you said the back wasn't an issue. Did you do anything differently today to prepare knowing that you're coming off of a back surgery or is it all like it used to be? Um, I've got like a little bit of a new routine, you know, new stretches and stuff just to make sure everything's warm and ready to go. A couple of different exercises activation wise, just to make sure that that core is uh, activated and, and fired up. Um, but everything else was normal. Throwing was normal. And uh, I had no problem with the back. Everything felt really good. You had talked about changing the grip a little bit on your fastball in hopes of increasing the spin rate. Yep. How is that progressing? Uh, I think today they still are looking at the numbers. Um, after that, I think they're going to look at them tonight and meet with me about it tomorrow. Um, but the initial kind of look, I think, was it was up a little bit. Um, not a ton, but it was up a little bit. So something we'll continue to watch and work on over these next few weeks. Thank you. Take the next question from Christy Ackert, Daily News. Go ahead, Christy, and unmute. Hi, James. Hi. Uh, I was just wondering, you know, you get to face some of your own you know, players, and it sounds like it's going to be a very limited exhibition, you know, schedule. How hard is that going to be for pitchers to prepare without facing hitters from other teams? Well, I think we're pretty lucky. We've got some really good hitters, um, and facing those guys is tough, you know, and they know our stuff. So if anything, I think that'll be more challenging and uh, help us get ready. We'll be able to talk to them about uh, what our stuff looks like coming out, and they'll be able to tell us what they see, which I think will help, help me and help other guys. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing from our hitters and what they're seeing and stuff like that to help me prepare to get ready. Thank you. We can take the next question from Brendan Cuddy, NJ.com. James, it's good to see you. I hope you're well. Hope you're well, too. Thank you. Uh, you threw today with the screen in front of you. Was that a conscious decision? Was that with what happened with Matt Tahiro in mind, or was that something you were going to do either way? Uh, you know, after yesterday, seeing that happen, I mean, I just wanted to play it safe, especially first time out there. Um, just kind of wanted to see how I felt, kind of getting things going a little bit. You know, what happened yesterday was so scary. And uh, luckily, it doesn't happen very often. Um, but just wanted to play it safe first time out. Next time, I think it'll be more of a sim game setting so that the screen won't be out there. But yeah, especially after yesterday, it was a conscious decision just to have it out there for safety. Right. Is that a thought behind not having fielded your position in X amount of months? Is that is that like one of the big drivers? Uh, part of it, you know, when a ball comes back at you that hard, I mean, there's really not much you can do. Um, you you kind of just get lucky if, if you put your glove in the, in the right spot. I mean, that ball came back, I think they said 112, and... Uh, there's really nothing you can do about that. It's just something that happens here and there, and um, you just pray that it doesn't doesn't happen. Um, but uh, you know, going forward, I think seeing it again and kind of having the ball coming back at you, having those ty types of hitters swinging the bat, kind of gets you ready for that. So I think that next time, after throwing to those guys and having the feel of being on the baseball field again, um, you know, we'll, we'll all get used to, like you said, fielding our position again and kind of being ready for that, as ready as we can be for something like that. Thank you, James. Thanks. Lindsay Adler from The Athletic. Lindsay, if you can unmute. Uh, hey, James. Glad you're Hi, uh, Lindsay. feeling better now. Um, I wanted to ask, last month you posted on Instagram about the you know, Black Lives Matter movement and the things that you were thinking about. And I was wondering if you would like to kind of expand on what, you know, you have been thinking about that and kind of what you've been learning in the last four, six weeks or so. Um, well, you know, I've just, I've just been trying to learn, you know, it's something that I haven't paid a lot of attention to. Um, I've been pretty ignorant to it um, up until now. 
and I've been reading articles and following different people, trying to get information, watching um, different things on Netflix and other streaming services to get more information about it, listening to different podcasts. Um, I'm not at a point where I feel comfortable like speaking too much about it, but I'm just trying to soak up and learn as much as I can right now so that I can be more educated and, uh, and become an ally and do things. You know, my wife and I have donated to a couple different um, uh, organizations, um, and we plan on doing more in that area. We can take the next question from Sweeney Murdy. Sweeney, go ahead and unmute. Hey, Pax. Hi. Hey, um, how difficult is it for this to be your free agent year and, uh, and have to take whatever happens this season and go into the market? And you guys worked your whole lives in the system to get to this point. What's, what's this uh, part of it like for you? Well, you know, it's obviously not ideal, but it is what it is, and I can't control uh, the things that have happened. So I'm just going to go out there and try to control what I can control and do the best that I possibly can uh, with the time that we have and see what happens. Thank you. Thanks. Next question from Andy Martino, SNY. Hey, James, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, uh, so you were obviously on the executive subcommittee, uh, deeply involved in the negotiations uh, to return to play. Uh, in your experience and now, what did you take away and what did you learn about labor relations in the game? And uh, did it leave you feeling optimistic that uh, conflict uh, might be avoided uh, with the next CBA or did it leave you feeling concerned about the state of labor relations? I mean, we'll see how things go. You know, I think that uh, we stood our ground and we fought for what we believed in. And uh, we ended up where we are right now. And we feel like we did a good job of um, sticking together. Uh, we felt like our group was very united. And uh, we, yeah, we, we knew what we wanted. We knew what we thought was fair. And um, we stuck to that. We can take for you, for you personally, as somebody who, who we know is being very uh, pleasant and uh, not someone we've seen in a lot of conflict, was it an education for you or was it unpleasant at all to be involved in a situation that became kind of a, a, a conflict? Uh, it was very educational for me. It was my first time going through something, being on the subcommittee. Um, so I learned a lot and, uh, you know, I think it was very valuable, very valuable information to learn and uh, especially getting ready for a CBA coming up, you know, just knowing what to what to expect and kind of what happens um, in in those negotiations and how things go. Um, it was it was I think helpful for me to go through something like that, even though we'd wish that we hadn't had to go through what we went through. Um, but it'll it had, it's going to prepare me for uh, the negotiations coming up in the future. Thank you. Thanks. We'll take a few more. Uh, Bob Clappish, NJ.com, if you can unmute. Hey, James, can you, uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm curious what your, your impression was of pitching in, in an empty stadium and what you think it's going to be like in two and a half weeks when the season starts. And not only will the stadium be empty, but it'll be even quieter today. There's no quieter than today, there'll be no music at all. For somebody who's You've made an entire career out of pitching in front of big crowds, especially here at Yankee Stadium, feeding off that energy. Do you think it's going to be much of an adjustment pitching in silence? Uh, I think it will be a bit of an adjustment for sure. You know, it's going to be different. I think that we're all used to having that buzz of fans and the stadium and the energy and everything. Um, but I think it's going to be a unique experience. Um, it's going to be a little nostalgic being able to hear all the baseball sounds that we used to hear when we were kids. And, you know, for me, when I'm out there, I've got a job to do and I'm focused on what I'm trying to accomplish. And that's 60 feet, six inches away, you know, and I'm doing the same thing every pitch and giving it everything I have. And that's not going to change. Next question from Marley Rivera. Marley, go ahead and unmute. Hi. How are you? Uh, good. How are you? 
So the, the thing that I wanted to ask you is the fact that you are Canadian and, and we know there's going to be a lot of travel involved, right, this season, I mean, mm -hmm. a lot less <laughs> with a 60 game season, but you guys are going to feel, you know, travel to Toronto, which is international travel, you may travel to uh, Florida. How comfortable do you feel, you know, during this uh, situation with the travel? Well, I feel like we're doing everything we can to be as safe as possible. Um, the Yankees here are doing a fantastic job of keeping us safe and doing following the protocols and uh, you know doing everything we can to mitigate the risk uh, and to and keeping us all healthy. Um, I feel very safe uh, with this group and uh, feel like we everyone's re being responsible, doing the best they can to stay stay healthy and stay safe. Uh, so the travel, I mean, I think that our the way that we have it set up, it's going to be as safe as it can be, and I feel pretty comfortable. I'm going to do the best job I can to stay healthy and, um, you know, keep others safe as well. I think it's all it's going to be the players kind of holding each other accountable and um, really just being as safe as we possibly can. But I, I feel like it's going to be okay. Next question from Dave Lennon. Dave, if you can unmute. Hey James, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, th there's been a couple of players, James, in addition to the ones that have already opted out. You know, some have suggested, like Andrew Miller and a couple other guys have said, you know, it, this isn't a slam dunk. We kind of have to see how things go, um, whether or not the regular season is going to be possible. I, I was curious, ha had you got that sense too, James, in talking to players that this spring, while well, the summer camp is kind of important to figure out if, if this can work from what you guys are trying to do? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're, we're testing out the protocols and, uh, you know, we're doing everything we can to mitigate the risk, but there's obviously still a risk. And uh, we have to see if what we're doing um, is going to work and to a degree that we're going to be able to play and keep it safe enough for people to feel OK about traveling and playing against, against other teams and keeping our guys and everyone, uh, all the staff and everyone healthy. So, th so this is something, James, that I guess the Players Association will kind of continue to talk about internally with you guys to check up on each other and see how all the teams are doing. Yeah, I think it will be something that's continually checked on. Um, I think that everyone's staying very connected and letting them know like what's going on and how people are feeling about it. And, you know, the numbers are coming in. We're doing testing every other day and uh, we're keeping an eye on that. And if we see any spikes, you know, we'll have to address that. But um, I think so far it's been going okay. Thanks, James. Thanks. Last one from Greg Joyce, New York Post. Greg, go ahead and unmute. We can't. No, we can't hear you, Greg. But I mean, can you hear him at all? No. No, Greg. Sorry, can you hear me now? Uh, a little better. A little better. What, what was the thought process like for you in terms of deciding to play this year? And was there any ever has any hesitation for you? Um, you know, I really I wanted to play. You know, I think that uh, the health and safety obviously is very important, and we needed to get to a point where we could get the protocols to a level where we felt like the risk was um, lessened enough to where we felt safe. And I feel like we have set up some really good protocols and I feel safe coming in here, um, being amongst the guys and the staff. Everyone here is being very responsible and uh, doing everything they can do to uh, stop the spread and stay healthy. Um, coming into this thing, I, I felt pretty confident about it and uh, feeling that I could do what I needed to do to stay healthy. Um, and we'll see how, how things go. You know, if it gets really bad, it'll, we'll have to, it's just a thing that you're constantly having to um, uh, weigh, you know, how, how good it's going. So um, it's something that we're, that everyone I think has their own level of where they feel comfortable uh, with it. And those constantly have to kind of see how they feel about that. 